Greetings, YouTubers. Welcome back. As an aspiring writer who is currently writing and developing her own book out of hopes to get published in the next year, I've learned a lot sitting in writing classes in my final two years of university. I've come to realize why The Last of Us Part Two was so dissatisfying when I realized a short story I'd written for my fiction writing class came off as more of a character sketch with too many flashbacks within flashbacks, and there being absolutely zero story behind any of it. I learned the real reason why Rick Reardon's book, The Trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy, for me, is the worst book he ever wrote. I learned how to develop convincing yet surprising characters and how to give them meaningful story arcs. I even realized what truly makes villains like Lord Voldemort, Judge Doom, and the comic version of Rita Repulsa so compelling and amazing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm the most amazing writer in the world. I'm not pretending to be up to the standards of J.K. Rowling, Cassandra Clare, Stephen King, Chris Claremont, or J.R.R. Tolkien, nor am I trying to be any of them, but I'd like to think that I have a pretty good insight of how to develop a story. And before you develop a story, characters need to be developed. That's the rule in literary fiction. And I think the best place to begin developing characters is by thinking about what kind of morality your character has. And if you need a roadmap, you can look no further than the Dungeons and Dragons Nine Moral Alignments. To keep it short and sweet, the Nine Moral Alignments in Dungeons and Dragons are three different subcategories within three alignments of evil, good, and neutral. There's chaotic evil, lawful evil, and neutral evil. Chaotic good, lawful good, and neutral good. Chaotic neutral, lawful neutral, and just neutral. All of which shape the arc your character goes on as you play through the game, giving you different dialogue options and allowing you to make your own compelling decisions until you get to the end result. You can easily look at these nine moral alignments and use them as tools for developing your characters, which is what I'm trying to do with my own book right now. Now, I'm not saying Uncle Rick, the writer of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, used this as a roadmap, but I thought it'd be fun if I sorted some of my personal favorite Rick Reardon characters into the nine moral alignments. And unfortunately, this won't include characters from the Kane Chronicles, or even his book The Daughter of the Deep, because those I haven't read just yet. But this will include characters from Percy Jackson, The Heroes of Olympus, The Trials of Apollo, and Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, simply because I can think of a few characters at the top of my head that'll automatically fit into at least some of the nine categories. Not all of them, because I'm uncertain if I can find find characters to fit into every single one of these nine categories, but I'll do the very best I can. So without further ado, let's sort Uncle Rick's characters from his Camp Half-Blood Chronicles into the nine moral alignments. I think the best place to start is right down the center with the good category, because that's where our heroes will align. For the most part, when Rick Reardon writes his protagonists, I find that they best fit into the category of neutral good. Neutrally good characters do not feel this need to follow every single societal rule that aligns with their own agenda. They'll follow the rules of good because they truly see themselves as good people, but they'll also bend them and sometimes break them if necessary. So obviously, some characters that fall into the neutral good category include the following. Percy Jackson, Nico D'Angelo, Magnus Chase, Alex Fierro, Piper McLean, Leo Valdez, Poseidon, and Selena Beauregard. Percy, in general, much like his father Poseidon, doesn't take too well to being restrained. He's the sea, connected to the ocean, and can either be controlled and calm or a chaotic storm, depending on which buttons you press. And his father is pretty much the exact same way. 
Magnus Chase, when living on the streets homeless, stole only when it was necessary, and he was selective about who he stole from. He thieved particularly from the rich and overprivileged, who probably wouldn't miss anything that they had because they had an abundance of it. Alex Fierro, being trans and gender fluid, she claims that she has tattoos of the dueling snakes, the symbol of Loki, because she sees it as her making this supposed symbol her own, and a way for her to separate herself from her father by proving that she can be her own person. Wait, Loki is technically Alex's mom because Loki had an affair with Alex's father in his female form, so I meant her mother, not her father. Piper only steals using her charm speak when it's absolutely necessary, similarly with Leo, and Selena acted as Cronus' spy out of effort to try saving the life of her boyfriend, Charles Beckendorf. Even Nico is neutrally good because he'll bend whatever rules he has to in order to turn the tides in the war to their favor, like he did in The Last Olympian when he helped Percy get the curse of Achilles by bathing in the river Styx, and when he convinced his father their Hades to join the fight as well. All these characters represent good neutrality, and if they represent good neutrality, then the next category we should focus on is lawful good. A lawfully good character genuinely believes in following the laws set by society. They believe in the hierarchy, and they have faith in how rules are set, and they will lawfully obey the rules while also being heroic and good. And the best examples of lawful good characters in this universe? Annabeth, Reina Ramirez Arellano, Jason Grace, and his sister Thalia, Artemis, Hazel Levesque, Frank Zong, Samira Alabas, and Thomas Jefferson T.J. Jr. Easily. Annabeth fully and faithfully believes in her mother, Athena, idolizes her even, and follows every single rule set for her like the obedient daughter of Athena, even saying Athena always has a plan. Jason, Hazel, Frank, and Raina all fall into this category simply because they were at some point the praetors of the 12th Legion at Camp Jupiter, meaning they have to follow the laws set for them because that's what their position calls for. Thalia loyally follows Artemis as her lieutenant of the Hunters of Artemis, pledging herself an a sexual virgin for all of eternity, and TJ, Magnus's hallmate in the Hotel Valhalla, holds on to his old-fashioned mentality from his time serving in the American Civil War and truly believes in following the rules. Even Samira Alabas, a Muslim Valkyrie, is in this alignment because she believes in doing the best job possible, leading the deceased to Odin's afterlife, while also remaining 100% faithful to her Muslim religion, being a respectful granddaughter to her grandparents, while also rejecting the evilness of her father, Loki. That moves us into the next category of chaotic good. Chaotically good characters are of course good characters, except they aren't lawful and they most certainly aren't neutral. They live by their own rules as vigilantes, for the most part, and they do what they wholeheartedly feel is right, even if it means going against the law completely. Now, this was a tough one, very tough, because there is one character in Percy Jackson whom I feel fits the chaotic good category, and that is the God goddess of love, Aphrodite. Why? Because the love goddess truly believes in love so much that she'll stop at nothing until she achieves people falling in love, even if it means living by her own rules, running off to have an affair with Ares to counterbalance him. And she will at times do and say things that frustrate the crap out of you because her intent and her heart is good and she truly is loving and compassionate as a mother who loves all her children deeply, even claiming Piper as one of her most favorite daughters. Okay, so we covered all the good categories. Now let's move into the evil categories, starting down the center with neutral evil. Now, you're probably wondering which character would fit as neutral evil in Reardon's universe, but I can think of a great example of neutral evil, Luke Castellan. Luke is truly a neutral evil character because 
His decisions throughout his character arc determine his outcome. He's conflicted and torn between giving into Cronus' plan while also feeling immense guilt for hurting those closest to him, especially towards the end of The Last Olympian when Annabeth reminds him that he promised they'd be a family, and Annabeth reminding him of this causes him to fall upon his own cursed blade, ending Cronus' life and redeeming himself. But that doesn't negate the fact that while he did die a hero, death, his actions as the main villain of the story truly make him a true representation of neutral evil in the war with Kronos. Now, if Luke is neutral evil, then who would be an example of lawful evil? I can name one, Octavian! Octavian is truly lawful evil because he so firmly believes in following the ancient Roman law to a point where he's extremely racist, xenophobic, pig-headed, and obscenely vile, leading the war towards Camp Half-Blood, hoping to kill all the Greek demigod campers because he thinks of them as a threat to demigod society, and because he believes his ancestor Apollo foretold that he would be worthy of becoming a prophet. He is every bit lawful evil. Evil, no question. And others who are lawful evil? The triumvirate of Nero, Commodus, and Caligula, for obvious reasoning. And now we move into chaotic evil, which in my opinion is the worst kind of evil because these are villains that just want to cause chaos no matter where they go and see everything around them destroyed. Gaia, Kronos and the Giants are some natural choices for this category, but the biggest one of them all? Loki! Loki in Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard will stop at nothing until he sees Ragnarok come to Midgard. And if that means taunting people in their dreams, kidnapping Magnus's Uncle Randolph and promising to bring him his wife and daughters back, and even forcing his own daughter Samira into an arranged marriage if he doesn't get the Skullfnung sword and stone, he is the living, breathing definition of pure chaos. And he's just pure chaos evil with absolutely zero remorse and he wants pure pandemonium. Now we move into lawful neutral. Now lawful neutral is exactly what it sounds like. People who follow their laws they believe in without necessarily being purely good or evil. And I think that that applies to just about almost all the gods such as Zeus, Hera, Athena, Hermes, Thor, Freya, Frey. They all pretty much fight in the wars against the main big threats. However, at the end of the day, they also remain neutral most of the time and more often than not, fight with each other. And they also refuse to directly involve themselves in the lives of their demigod children because they cannot sway their children into doing anything for them. They allow their children to make their own choices. Sure, they could guide them in the direction of what they feel they should be doing, but they cannot make them do anything. They have their own laws and ideals that they truly believe in. And for the most part, they abide by these laws and ideals. Now, let's wrap this up with the neutral category because I don't think that there are any characters that could fit into the chaotic neutral category, but we've got plenty of just pure neutral characters to go around. Sally Jackson, Paul Blofus, Hades, Ares, and Randolph Chase because these are characters who either don't want to be directly involved in the war or they simply are not. Ares is truly neutral because even though he's done some shitty stuff, much like Hades, they aren't truly on anybody's side here. Ares and Hades simply make their own rules without following the rules Zeus puts in place for them to follow. Paul, Sally, and Randolph don't get involved by choice at all whatsoever. They're just there to give the titular character something to latch onto and fight for. Even Gabe Ugliano is just pure neutral because he's not involved at all. He just sits at home, drinks his beer, and plays poker while eating his bean dip and chips with his buddies, all the while being a shit stepdad to Percy. Even Percy's school bullies are neutral, if you really think about it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you happen to be brand new, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out all my social media. Links will be down below per usual. God bless, happy viewing, and have a nice day.